These cases are increasing dramatically over the last few years. These children never use doorbells for some reason. It's always this long, persistent knock without a break at all. They know right away that something's not right. These children are trying to get an invitation into the person's home. It's worldwide at this point. The black-eyed children are said to be paranormal creatures that resemble children and appear to be between the ages of 6 and 16 depending on who they encounter. No one knows where they come from and how they appear, but people report being left terrified after encountering these beings. Over the years, people have come up with various theories as to what these beings are. Some believe that they are extraterrestrials, while others believe them to be demonic in nature and seek to cause harm to those who grant them entry. By all accounts, when they appear, they want access into the victim's home to call their parents, but once eye contact is made, their presence seems a lot more sinister. What is fascinating about these encounters is that the reports people make are extremely similar. All witnesses state that their eyes are jet black, they have very pale skin, and once in close proximity, individuals have an overwhelming, uneasy feeling about the situation. These beings are commonly described as wearing dated clothing and always ask for something. They appear to want to get close to whoever they encounter. They will request things to achieve this goal, such as entry into the person's home or ride in their car. In recent times, the black-eyed children have made it into creepypasta lore, but people who have reported experiencing an encounter with these beings insist that they are telling the truth and that there is something highly unusual happening. It's presumed that encounters have been happening for over a hundred years, but the first person to report an encounter with these beings that I'm aware of is a man named Brian Bethel. This is his incident. One evening, Brian travelled to his internet provider to pay his bills which was located on North 1st Street in Abilene, Texas. Brian parked the car in a nearby theatre parking lot and wrote the check whilst there. The area was dark and Brian was relying on the dim light inside his car. Now, this is where things get strange. Brian was about to get out of his car to drop the check off at the office's drop slot. However, there was a knock on his car window. This made Brian jump and he described seeing two boys aged between 9 and 12. He reported that the boys were wearing hooded pullovers and were very pale. One had curly hair while the other was redheaded. Brian rolled down his window and the boys spoke to him. They explained that they had come to watch the premiere of Mortal Kombat at the theatre, but had forgotten their money at their mother's home. They then requested that Brian drove them back to their mother's house to get their money and then back to the theatre. During this conversation, Brian reported that he was overwhelmed by an irrational fear and had absolutely no idea why this was the case. He also reported that the boys were trying to convince and reassure him and promise that it wouldn't take long, that they couldn't enter his car without his permission and that they didn't have a gun. Brian, panicking now, tried to hide his fear and show that he was calm. He noted that he subconsciously reached for the door handle before snapping out of it and quickly driving away from the boys. He did this as he came to notice that they both had coal black eyes and later described that they are the sort of eyes one would expect to see on television programs about aliens or vampires. They were just soulless orbs like two great swathes of starless night sky. After this incident, Brian shared his encounter privately with some trusted friends, but unfortunately this incident leaked and spread like wildfire online. To this day, Brian has consistently stated that he was telling the truth and that this bizarre incident changed him. Now, let's review another bizarre incident that can't be easily explained, documented on MysteriousUniverse.org and as always, you'll find the link in the description. Brent was 18 and was about to start college at the time, but had decided to go on a road trip beforehand. Now. Brent decided to make the trip from his hometown in California to Denver, Colorado, with the intention of visiting a friend there. Unfortunately, Brent didn't have much money at the time and his parents weren't keen on the idea, but not wanting to intrude, they didn't stop him. During the drive, somewhere in the wilds of Nevada at this point, Brent realised that this drive was going to take much longer than previously thought. Feeling tired, he parked the car and was a bit creeped out since the area had no lighting at all and as a result was pitch black, it was there he drifted off asleep. Brent reported awaking to light tapping on the window and said that there was a young man peering into the car. 
He described this person as being fairly skinny and thought that this individual must have been in his late teens. Brent also said that he was dressed normally and at first didn't seem particularly threatening in any way. Obviously dazed and confused, Brent questioned what the man wanted. The man calmly said, open the door. Brent, panicking now, said that suddenly he was flooded with an overwhelming sense of danger and obviously said no. The man then demanded again that Brent open the door. At this point, Brent noticed that the man wasn't alone and that he was accompanied by two others who were lurking nearby in the background. Now, this is where things get bizarre. Initially, Brent reported that he thought it was kids trying to mess with him, so he took out a knife, allowing these strangers to see it in the hopes that it would scare them away. However, this didn't work and infuriated the man who must have known that there was no way Brent was opening the door. Brent went on to note that this man let out an incredibly chilling and intense wail and he began to hit and shove the car, which shook it and Brent said that he felt the car lift from the ground slightly. He said that it was an incredible display of strength that he would never have expected from a person, let alone someone who was so thin. The car came to a stop and it was at this moment of panic he noticed that the two other people with him also had something very strange about them. Brent reported that their eyes were either glowing or reflecting light of the moon and that they were somewhat blurry or fuzzy. One of them appeared to be a girl and without warning was now right beside the car alongside the man. This again made him jump and he noted that she did so in the blink of an eye before requesting that he opens the door. At this point, Brent snapped out of his panic and shock. He started the car but said that he was nearly paralysed in fear with the thought that they may have tampered with it in some way, preventing it from starting. Fortunately, the car did start and Brent quickly sped away as fast as his car would allow. Now, if things weren't already strange enough, Brent reported that again he was gripped with an intense fear and noticed that one of them was now running alongside the car and noted that he was going around 40 miles per hour. All the while, this entity was banging on the car window with increasing force. Brent floored it and noted that around 50 miles per hour was the point where this entity began to fall behind and eventually faded into the darkness. Brent drove and drove until they came across a populated diner where he then stayed for three hours, shaking and filled with adrenaline. He never told his friend or police about this incident as he didn't think that they would believe his encounter and decided it would be for the best if he remained quiet. To this day, Brent remains adamant that he was telling the truth and still has no explanation as to what these beings were or why it happened. Now again, I can't confirm whether or not this next case is true, but the reporter is again adamant that it is. A 21 year old woman who wished to remain anonymous reported that one night she woke up to her dog Lucy barking at the end of her bed whilst her husband and 22 month old daughter were sleeping. The dog was staring at the bedroom door like there was an intruder behind it, but she thought that Lucy was just barking at a noise such as the house settling or the wind as she was only a three month old puppy. She reported that she opened the door to show Lucy that there was nothing there. However, as soon as she opened the door, the dog raced out and headed towards the front door. When Lucy reached the door, she started snarling and growling. Again, the lady decided to open the door to show Lucy that there was nothing there, but as soon as she reached her hand out to open it, Lucy went absolutely mad. She barked and jumped, and when she touched the handle, Lucy started whimpering and backing away, now absolutely terrified. The lady looked through the peephole and was not expecting what she saw. She said that, stood on the porch, were two girls. One looked around 16 or 17, a slender build and very pale. The girl had long blonde hair and was wearing jeans and a green pullover. This girl was holding the hand of a smaller girl who looked around three or four, who wore jeans and an ivory cardigan. She noted that the smaller girl was looking at the floor almost shyly and was holding a stuffed toy in her free hand. Despite a sense of uneasiness and fear, the lady stated that she would have invited them in for hot chocolate as she thought that something was wrong. However, with no indication that she was even at the door, the older girl spoke. The girl spoke confidently and said, we have to use your phone, our mother is worried. It was at this point, the girl lifted her head and looked directly towards the peephole. She had midnight black eyes. The lady reported that she had an interest in all things creepy and so she knew what the girls were as soon as she saw her eyes. 
She goes on to state that she never actually believed in these types of things. Being an atheist and a complete skeptic, and despite not believing it, she could not deny that there were two black-eyed children on the other side of the door. With Lucy still whimpering, she began to back away from the door. However, despite sounding polite previously, the older girl becomes more commanding and hostile. Just let us in to use your phone, we're not going to hurt you. If we wanted to do that, we would have broken in. I'll ask you again, may we come in and use your phone? Strangely, the lady reported feeling compelled to go back and let them in, but she kept inching backwards towards the bedroom. Once there, the lady covered the window, locked the door, and sat next to her husband on the bed. She reported that she heard the girl calling for her once more before falling silent. Needless to say, she didn't sleep well that night. Now, moving on from that incident, let's review some shorter reports. This man also wished to remain anonymous. He reported walking his three-year-old German Shepherd Dakota at one in the morning at a local park that leads to a hiking trail. The man let Dakota off her leash, but as soon as he did so, she bolted off to the trail opening, stopping about eight feet away from the entrance. This is where he noticed a tall, dark figure coming out from the darkness of the trail. The man ran over to his dog who was staring at the figure, a 17 to 20 year old girl approximately 5 feet and 9 inches tall. He reported that she was wearing black skinny jeans, boots, a black leather jacket, and as she was walking out of the trail, stopped and stared at the dog. At this point, the man said to the girl, Don't worry, she's harmless, but he was met with silence, just no reaction at all. He attempted to put the leash back on Dakota, but she took a couple of steps towards the girl. I think she likes you, the man said, which was again met with silence. However, the girl took one step towards Dakota, who immediately put her tail between her legs and began whimpering. Stating that he knew that it was time to go, the man picked up Dakota and began speedwalking back towards the entrance to the park. Halfway across the field, the man put his dog down and put a leash back on. Dakota, however, was rooted in place and staring behind him. The man turned around to see the girl still standing not even 10 feet away from them. This is when he noticed the pitch black eyes filling her entire eyeballs. In a sweet voice, she said, does she bite? To which the man replied, no. The girl then asked, do you live nearby? Did you drive here? I'm going to need to come with you. You'll let me come with you. That's okay, right? It's okay. Don't be afraid. Once the girl finished speaking, Dakota bolted away towards the entrance with the man following closely behind. Once they reached the other side of the street, he turned around to make sure that she didn't follow and he saw her slowly heading back towards the entrance of the hiking trail. An engineer, going by the name of Noatic, wished to remain anonymous and noted that he was working the night shift for a data center in Ohio on the 31st of July 2010. At around 5am, he went outside for a smoke break when he saw two teenage boys standing a couple of feet away from him, motionless and staring at him. Feeling extremely uncomfortable, Noatic went back inside. However, 10 minutes later, the intercom buzzed, Noatic checked the security monitors and saw the two boys staring into the surveillance camera almost as if they were looking right at him. After hitting the speaker button, Noatic called out and asked what they were doing there, which was met with silence, motioning him to come outside. He told them to go away, but the boys didn't leave and just continued to stare into the camera. After another 10 minutes of this, Noatic reported that he was becoming tired of this game and so decided to go to the door to chase them off. Just before opening the door, Noatic stated that he could see the boys through the one-way glass and was shocked to notice that their eyes were completely black. He thought to himself that he would tell them to go away and threaten them with calling the police. However, almost as if the boys read his mind, one of them said, that will not be necessary sir, we simply need to use your phone, can you let us in? Noatic reported pulling out his phone and threatened to call the police if they didn't leave. He went to his security monitor and noticed that only one boy remained staring into the camera. A second later, he saw the other boy staring into camera 3 which is located at the back of the building. Feeling unnerved, Noatic called the police. By the time they arrived at 6am, both of the boys were gone. Now, the question remains, what happens when these beings are allowed in close proximity with the victim and granted entry? 
Paranormal investigator David Weatherly has been investigating this phenomena for years, and during an interview on Coast to Coast, noted that he obviously doesn't believe that these beings are actually children. He also said that it's extremely rare that these beings are let into the home, normally the victim is too gripped in fear and the flight instinct kicks in. However, when they do receive an invitation and are let in, the victims report various consequences as a result. Weatherly notes that he believes the consequences are determined on proximity with the victim during the encounter and those closer experiences determine more unfortunate results. For instance, Weatherly has received reports from individuals that have either touched one of these entities or have been touched by them and have later noted that they contracted severe illnesses. Others report feeling extremely negative after the event and have what they describe as bad luck affect every part of their life for a long period of time. Others go on to report extremely terrible things happen after granting an invitation. Such as a man in New Orleans went on to say that after a very close encounter with these beings, his sister passed away not long afterwards and because of the negativity he felt from the encounter, blamed it on these beings. Weatherly later went on to speculate that these black-eyed children very well might be creating the circumstances which bring about negative outcomes for the victim, suggesting that they may very well be feeding off this fear and negativity somehow. Now, let's review an incident documented by WeekinWeird.com where a lady made the mistake of letting these children inside her home. This lady, who wished to remain anonymous, described that she made the mistake of letting these black-eyed children into her home and is now fearful of losing her life. It's important to note that she wanted this to serve as a warning to anyone who may encounter these beings. This lady was located in a rural town in Vermont and noted that the community was very close and everyone knew each other and as a result, some people in the town didn't lock their doors at night if they are in. One night, this woman woke up to what she described as a loud banging on the front door, which confused her as her door was unlocked and people in the community don't tend to bother each other at this time of night. It's important to note that during this particular night, there was a heavy snowstorm in the area, so she thought that someone might have had an accident and are in trouble. After looking out of her window, she noted that the motion spotlight was on and that there were footprints in the snow leading up to her driveway, but there was no car in the area. The snow was still fresh on the road, meaning that no one had driven by recently. The view of the front door was obscured from her position at the window, but she did notice that someone was standing nearby. Feeling uneasy now, she woke her husband up and told him about what had happened while the banging at the door picked up again. The husband went downstairs to answer it, while she remained behind him in the hallway. She noted that as the door opened, there were two children, a boy and a girl, stood in the snow looking down towards the ground and weren't any more than eight years old. She described that they were dressed strangely. The girl's hair was very long and straight, while the boy had a dated bowl cut. She said that they certainly were not dressed for winter and suspected that they must have come from a nearby community. Now, it's important to note that the woman detailed that she and her husband were the sort of people who would have rushed these children inside their home after seeing them in the snowstorm, but they both felt that the children were unnerving somehow. They wouldn't make eye contact, and when asked if they were okay, they simply replied, can we come in? The husband, confused now and feeling strange, asked his wife what he should do, and she asked them where their parents were. They simply replied that they'll be here soon. This happened around 2am and the couple concluded that there must have been an accident nearby and these children must be suffering from some sort of trauma and against better judgement granted them an invitation inside their home. The woman left to make them some hot chocolate and the husband took them to the living room and again asked if they were okay, where they came from and how far they walked and if their parents were okay. The children kept repeating that our parents will be here soon. It was noted that these children spoke in a sing-song-like voice and weren't afraid to be in a stranger's home. This is where the wife noted that they had four cats and three of them were hiding, while one of them remained with her but seemed very fearful. When she bent down to reassure the cat, he hissed and growled before backing away. Walking back to the living room now, she noted that her husband was sat down holding his head in his hands. She asked what was wrong and he said that he felt that something was wrong and he felt dizzy. Turning around to give the children their drinks, they looked up at the woman who said that it took everything she had to keep herself from dropping the drinks. 
she detailed that their eyes were completely jet black and had no whites at all. She went on that when they noticed she was scared of them, they asked if they could use the bathroom. Trying to be as composed as possible, she took them down the hall and then they went into the bathroom. She then ran back to her husband who was now suffering from a nosebleed and asked if he had seen their eyes too. He said yes and was clearly panicking. It was noted that her husband almost never gets nosebleeds and she started to cry thinking that these children were somehow causing it. At this point, all of the power in the house went out. Looking down the hallway, they could see the children standing right at the end, not moving and just staring at them. This went on for some time and eventually the boys said, our parents are here and they just walked out the front door. Looking out of the window, they noted that there were two men inside a black car at the end of their driveway. The children got in and they drove off. After this incident, she reported that nothing was ever the same again. Three of their cats went missing, while the fourth was found in a pool of his own blood in the living room. The vet noted that he had suffered some kind of hemorrhage, but wasn't sure why. The husband's nosebleeds would become a regular occurrence. The doctor didn't know what to make of it. The husband was later diagnosed with aggressive skin cancer. The doctor asked if they had used some kind of indoor tanning as this kind of melanoma is linked with an overuse of tanning. The doctors noted that they had no idea how it could possibly have gotten so bad in such a short amount of time, but thankfully as time went by, we're confident that he would recover from this. The woman went on to say that since this incident, she has suffered from regular dizzy spells and nosebleeds along with other, more personal issues that she didn't wish to mention. She said that after this incident, she had been in the worst condition of her life and wished that they had never opened the door that night. I'd just like to take a moment to thank everyone for the support and encouragement. I can't believe that the channel is growing so quickly. And a massive thank you to my patrons who have enabled me to use much higher quality footage in these videos and I'm very grateful for your generosity. If you want to check out my Patreon, you can find the link in the description. I'd also like to thank everyone who took part in the Black Eyed Children poll I put up. It was a lot of fun reading through the debates and points everyone was making. I'm also going to be doing a face reveal on Christmas Eve. I thought it would be a good time to answer some questions and criticism and all that stuff, so expect that. I'm also hoping to have another documentary style video up before the new year, so I'll be sure to keep you updated on that. As always, thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me a lot. I hope that you have a great day or evening depending on where you are. Be safe guys, and I'll catch you soon. Peace.